Greetings, I'm Jonathan Speard, and there are rabbit holes of plenty, and welcome to New Omnifactory Super Shorts. I want to make lots of simulation chambers and loot fabricators, but those require dark steel, which usually requires obsidian in an alloy smelter with steel. However, there is one other, much easier recipe using void crystals. You can get void crystals using a device from Actually Editions called the Atomic Reconstructor and with coal. To make the Atomic Reconstructor, however, we'll need a couple of things. Lead is easy, although we haven't needed to make it yet. And for emitters, I'm going to need more electronic processors along with electrum and nether quartz. And the aluminum casing will require black quartz. Black quartz is one of our first roadblocks. You can't buy black quartz ore, but you can autoclave it from crushed black quartz, and you can electrolyze that from quartzite dust. We can buy quartzite ore, but we need 90 EU per tick, which is in the MV range, so we're going to need an advanced electrolyzer. We also need an ender eye lens, which requires eyes of ender, which requires blaze powder. How am I going to get blaze powder? I want to get it pretty reliably, as opposed to one time with hellish matter, so I'd like to make the blaze data model, but to get the blaze data model, I'm going to need more hellish matter which means more slime balls for magma cream. But will I get them from leaves? No, I'm going to get them using this slime data model, which was surprisingly easy to make, and pristine slime matter creates 32 slime balls, which is absolutely exceptional. Chance is fickle. At a 10% pristine chance for my enderma models, I only got two enderma pristine matter for 32 pulsating polymer clay, but in less than that amount of time, I've gotten four slime matter. Five slime matter, it's incredible. With the power of about four stacks of slime balls, I should be able to make enough slime blocks, yes, 28, to make all the magma cream for the hellish matter. Although I now have seven hellish matter, we're going to need one more in order to create the blaze powder for the blaze data model. To get the gunpowder, we can just stick an overworldian metal with coal. Now, I could start training this blaze data model. However, I know that one blaze powder is sufficient to make my atomic reconstructor, so I'm just going to keep this in the back burner for now while I get ready my proper polymer clay setup. One eye of ender as such, and then with an autoclave and the correct amount of water, which is uh, an entire bucket, we can get an ender eye lens. I'm screaming, I have made so many electronic circuits because to make all the loot fabricators I need, I'm going to need oodles of electronic processors. For a particular goal I'm going for, I'm going to need about 8 more loot fabricators, so I've made 18 electric processors, the second two, or the last two, so I can get the advanced electrolyzer, of course. I do need a bunch more energetic alloy, however, so I'm going to use a witch data model to get the next glowstone, as opposed to that crazy golden phosphor recipe. Here's the advanced electrolyzer I needed. I'll also want an MVCEF to power it. Now let's make some quartzite ore, macerate the quartzite, and electrolyze the quartzite into black quartz very, very slowly. I'm going to want a spider data model to get more string, because for the simulation chamber I'm going to need 32 pulsating mesh altogether, and to get the cobwebs we can put string, slime ball, and two overworldian matter together. Pristine spider matter also makes copper, which we'll need later. Let's autoclave our crushed black quartz into black quartz proper, and then make our aluminum casing. Electrum, made from gold and silver, enables me to create the emitters that I need. With lead ore, I can make the lead plates I need for the atomic reconstructor. Two emitters, and an atomic reconstructor. I'm also going to need about two stacks of pulsating dust in order to make all the pulsating meshes I need. It's worth noting that for every 6.2 simulation chambers you have down, you need another Enderman model in order to support those 6.2. I plan to have 8 running besides the Ender Pearl, so I'm going to need another Enderman simulation chamber. The Atomic Reconstructor needs to be connected to RF power. When it activates, it shoots a laser out into the distance. If there's an item in front of the laser, and it has a recipe for the Atomic Reconstructor, it will be converted according to that recipe. The Atomic Reconstructor can convert multiple things at once. Every time the Atomic Reconstructor shoots a laser, whether or not it converts anything, it uses 1000 RF. The Atomic Reconstructor has two modes, Deactivation and Pulse. In Pulse mode, when you give it a redstone pulse, it activates, but in Deactivation mode, it will just constantly activate, although at a fairly slow rate, until it runs out of power, or until you give it a redstone signal. By the way, to toggle it between these modes, you must be holding a redstone torch. Another benefit of Super Shorts, you do not need to wait while I produce 136 Dark Steel. Only I do. However, I would highly suggest making more alloy smelters if you're going to do something like this. I'm about to do that myself. Actually, why do that when I can just requisition the alloy smelter I already have over here? 
17 LV machine casings, 17 LV machine holes, and 17 dark steel machine holes, 9 simulation chambers, and 8 loot fabricators. I'm going to start making models. Why do I have seeds in my hand? Well, I got them from the overworld in order to breed chickens, but where am I going to get chickens? Also, sorry, I went to the overworld. You can spawn chickens using two Omniquarters. I'm going to put them in this sad position and breed them together, and then kill one of them. And then I'm going to use a piece of overworldly matter to turn the raw chicken into rotten flesh. To make a zombie model. Because I have no other use for rotten flesh, I'm just going to turn it into a whole bunch of iron. To get a gas model, which will give us silver, I need a gas tier, which takes spider eyes and sugars. To get the spider eye, I use the loot fabricator with pristine spider matter. You cannot simply craft sugar cane into sugar, you have to pulverize it. Creeper data model. And one more enderman data model, in order to handle all the data models I'd like to be handling. In order to get more out of a single recipe for conduits, always put them into the assembly machine. I'm gonna need more conduits, that's why I'm doing this. I'm currently powering my deep mob learning simulation chambers and loot fabricators. I have to fill them up with power. But notice that right here is a bit of a loop of conduit. We do not want any loops of conduits in a large conduit network, or conduit network calculation gets difficult. In order to fix this, let's switch into energy mode. We can do this by shift scrolling on a Yetta wrench and then right click on this connection to get rid of it. And now, right now, we have something that only works in branches of a tree. I have nine simulation chambers here, all of which take in pulsating polymer clay from the top alone. I must put filters in each of these conduits. In order to save the ender eye network from excessive calculation trying to figure out what can and cannot go into a simulation chamber. I don't want to put each filter into this network and configure every single one of them individually. But I can shift right click on filters in my hand to open all of them up as one inventory. Now if I check the MBT tags, I can see that they all have the same filter for polymer clay. I filtered this loot fabricator on shulker matter and this loot fabricator on enderman matter. I'm going to configure this loot fabricator to create ender pearls. I'm going to wrench this conduit in order to extract, always active, these ender pearls. We'll notice, however, that no ender pearls are going through this filter into this fluid extractor. Why? Because, as usual, the auto output side of this machine is set to where the conduit is inputting. But as it turns out, we can actually shift right click on the output side with a screwdriver to allow input from the output side. And that's what we're going to do for this fluid extractor so that we get... Excuse me, you actually need to shift right click on the face. You can't do it from another side. But now, behold, ender pearls are going in and pulsating dust is being created in the smelter and being turned into pulsating polymer clay. If I set this ender IO conduit to extract always active, it might just shove all of its pulsating polymer clay into one single model until that model fills up with pulsating polymer clay and then it starts filling the next one. However, there's an option called round robin, which will make it look for all inventories that will accept pulsating polymer clay and then cycle between them each time it extracts. Important note, when the Ender IO conduit extracts, it extracts in batches. So if it extracts a batch of four, it won't send one pulsating polymer clay to four different Ender IO conduits. It will send four pulsating polymer clay to one conduit, and then switch conduits the next time it extracts. This Shulker model loot fabricator will be producing diamonds. And with the help of filters on these numismatic dynamos, we'll be inserting diamonds into them. Make sure to send it to round robin. Simple calculations indicate that this alloy smelter will make one pulsating polymer clay every three seconds, which is not exceptional, because these simulation chambers take about 15 seconds to run. I can only run five simulation chambers off of one alloy smelter, and I kind of need to run all of them. But how, Jonathan, you ask, are you going to produce two alloy smelters that are running this recipe all at the same time? That's a question that's going to have to wait until the next episode. But, with diamond power generation and ender pearls feasibly automated for an indefinite period of time, that's it for today's episode. Next episode, we'll be improving DML for the umpteenth time, and one time more of many. And then we're going to try and automate electronic circuits. That might happen in that episode, we'll see. As always, if you have any feedback, I'd love to hear it. I hope you enjoyed, and God bless you all. Uh, sorry, don't forget to create some drawer to hold your extraterrestrial matter, or your system's gonna clog up.